is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto Shalom. Someone wrote to us and asked us, what is the relationship between Shabbat and the communion table? And what do you do if you have somebody at the table at the Shabbat meal that is not a believer? So Gerrit, can you please ask, answer this question so that we can have clarity about this? This is a very common thing that I find that people um, somehow confuse the Shabbat meal with communion. And there's a very good reason why they do it. We grow up with this of having bread and a cup that's connected to communion. And so immediately when they get to a Shabbat table and here we have a cup and we have bread and now, oh, this is a Shabbat meal. So this is also communion, but that's not what it is, because we need to understand the origin of it. The communion was not introduced at a Shabbat meal. Communion was introduced at a Pesach meal, at a Passover meal, and at Passover they use matzah. They don't use normal bread like this, but because in normal churches, people don't always use matzah, which is the prescribed thing that you should be using according to the Bible, because there is a very specific reason, and I'll answer that just now. We have this conflict in our minds, and, and I want you to understand that this is, this is separation. So let me just quickly speak about what does the bread and the wine, or the bread and the cup, Bread and grape juice, depending on what you're going to use, what does it represent? Well, what it represents is receiving a harvest from God. So Friday night, when we have a Shabbat meal, we're actually celebrating that we've come to the place of a harvest. And the last thing that is harvested when we go through this agricultural cycle is grapes. And so when we drink of this fruit of the grapes, this grape juice, this wine, when we drink of that, we're actually celebrating to say we've worked and God is faithful to always give us a harvest. We will not work in vain. We will not just work and not receive. No, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So that's what I'm doing when I drink of the cup. So I'm saying we've come to a place where we have now received our harvest. Then we wash hands, and the washing of the hands has to do with us committing ourselves to having the water of the word on our hands, on our deeds. And when we do that, the Bible says if we will do what God will tell us, then he will bless us. So then when we eat of the bread, then what we are doing is we are actually prophetically saying whenever we will work, whenever we will do what God will say us, He will give us another harvest because the beginning of the harvest is bread. So we don't start with that which is the beginning of the harvest. We start with that which is the end. Then we go to that which is the beginning. Now you will also notice that here is a change in order because at the communion table, you first partake of the bread and then of the cup. But at the Shabbat table, it's the other way around. Because the purpose of the Shabbat table is not communion. I'm not saying that people can't have communion afterwards. They can have their Shabbat meal and then maybe at the end of it, the family can say, oh, we really want to have communion together. But that's a separate issue. Communion was introduced at the Passover table, not at a regular Friday night Shabbat meal. So, and also there you have matzah, 
which is the representation of the bread of affliction or the bread without yeast, the bread without sin. And Yeshua is that one. He came, he lived here as a man, but he never sinned. And so when I would break that bread of affliction, this matzah, what I'm saying is, he who never sinned, who was pierced, and, and this bread has some piercing in it, it's got all these holes in it, he gave his body to be broken for me. And then after that, once we've eaten of that, then we'll take the cup and we'll drink. Because it's the other way around. And now this cup does not represent a harvest. Now this cup represents the blood of Yeshua. So it has two different meanings. So if I would have somebody at my Shabbat table who's not a believer, it doesn't matter. What I'm actually doing is I'm telling him, hey, God has given me a harvest. Taste of this. Taste how good God is. And what I'm saying is when he eats of the bread, God will always come and he will always bless us. So it's actually proclaiming good news to him. That's fine. It's when we get to the communion, yes. Then the Bible says, no uncircumcised one should ever sit at the table of the Passover. Now, what does this mean? Does it mean that people have to be circumcised in the flesh? No, this is a, a circumcision of the heart. And, and we will have to speak about circumcision at some point in time because I believe that this is something that has become relevant because people have now tried to revert back to physical circumcision. And there is a different promise for, for physical circumcision than what there is for the circumcision of the heart. But the communion has to do with a circumcision of the heart where I have come into a relationship with him. So I say you can't have communion together with somebody that's an unbeliever because there is a specific prohibition for this. There's specifically in the scripture that it says, no, you're not allowed to do it. But when it gets to Shabbat, as soon as I remove the idea of Passover from it, and I'm now just at Shabbat, this is actually proclaiming the good news that God has made us in His image, in His likeness, so that we can make decisions which will result in fruitfulness. And now we are eating and drinking of two things which represents the harvest time from seed up to the grapes. And we're actually saying God is good. And so anybody can sit at that table. It's like anybody who will come to a, to a meeting somewhere who's not a believer. They can come and sit at the, in that meeting and I can proclaim the good news to them. This is just a much more practical way in which I'm proclaiming the good news to somebody. I'm saying to somebody, hey, do you want to be fruitful? Well, then you need to listen and do what God tells you. And so I want to encourage you. Do not mix these things in your mind. We have to just separate it to understand that Shabbat and the, the cup and the bread at Shabbat is not about the body and blood of Yeshua. It is about being fruitful. It's about being obedient and listening to Him and then knowing that He will make us fruitful. Yes, when we get to communion, it's something different. Because now we are celebrating the death and resurrection of Yeshua. We're celebrating the fact that his body was broken for us. And that there is healing for us because of his body that was broken. Uh, the, the physical needs that we have can be met. And when we drink of the cup, we are saying the life is in the cup. There's re in, in the blood, there is resurrection life for us mm -hmm. available. But these are two separate things. You can. I don't have a problem with that. I don't say you can't do that. You can have that on a Shabbat evening where you first have your Shabbat meal, you experience this, and then at the end of the meal you can say, okay, now let us as a family have communion. And I'm saying that's fine. There's no problem with that. To then bring this to the table. But then you need to understand it's two separate things. The one has to do with harvest times, 
and God's goodness of blessing us with, with a harvest, and the other one has to do with our redemption. It's not the same thing. I can have it at the same time, first start with the Shabbat thing, end off with, with, with communion, but then I need to make sure that there are no unbelievers with me when I have that communion, because then I am creating a problem for myself. So, guys, understand this. God wants us to be fruitful. He wants you to be fruitful. He has made us to be fruitful. He says, let us make man in our image and our likeness. And let them have dominion. Let them make decisions which will lead to being fruitful. He says, be fruitful, multiply. That's God's desire. And that's what we celebrate at the Shabbat table. That's what we celebrate at every festive table, except for Passover. When we get to Passover, then these two things come into play, where we say, no, now it's about a redemption. But then it's turned around. Then it's not first the cup and then the bread, as it is with the Shabbat meal. But then it is first the bread, the matzah, and then the cup. The order is turned around because his body was broken and in the process then he gave his, his blood and he died. He was resurrected and now there's resurrection life for us and the life is in the blood. And we need to walk in this resurrection life. We need to live in accordance with that resurrection life. My prayer for you is that you will shema, that we will listen and obey and do what God tells us to do so that we can experience this harvest in everything that we put our hands to, not only financially, but in our spiritual life, in our relationships with people, in whatever we do, that we will experience God's blessings and His goodness. May God bless you. We want to thank you that you have joined us for this broadcast. If you have a question that you want us to answer, please write to scripture says at hebrewpeople.com and we will discuss it. We send notifications of future broadcasts to those who have subscribed. To subscribe, please add the name and number that you see on the screen to your contacts on your phone and let us know that you have done it by sending a WhatsApp message to the number on the screen with your name, email address, country and city you are from. Please also share this with your friends. We want to thank you for your prayers and financial support. The seed that you are sowing make it possible for us to continue. If you want to donate towards these broadcasts, please write to scripture says at hebrewpeople.com and we will send you the banking details for your continent. You can also donate via PayPal with the details that are on the screen. Thank you once again for joining us at What the Scripture Says About. We are looking forward to spending time with you again. <music>